Hello guys, welcome back. Hope you had a wonderful weekend, nice restful weekend. Uh, we're right back into it. Another, we got a, a full five day week this week. So, uh, important thing that you need to know is that on Wednesday we're going to be taking the actual test for the foundations unit. It'll be very similar uh, type problems to what we did on the practice test. Um, but the main thing is that after we're done with our first unit, we take that test on Wednesday, we're going to move on to the logic unit and I'm not going to be taking any late work for unit one anymore. So if I were you, I would go back through all of your assignments for unit one, make sure that you've received full credit two out of two for every single one of the assignments. If there's an assignment you didn't receive full credit for, uh, check the comments to see if I told you, you need to show more work on certain problems, or if you just simply didn't complete the assignment, uh, you can go back and resubmit those assignments for full credit up until uh, Wednesday. After Wednesday, once we moved on to the logic unit, I'm not going to accept any more late work. Uh, there are a few exceptions for some of you guys. You know who you are, uh, who came into the class later or something happened. Okay. So, uh, if you're not sure if that applies to you, then just, just talk to me and I'll let you know, um, when, when I'll accept, uh, some deadlines for some of you, uh, special case scenarios, but for everyone else, Wednesday is the last day. So, uh, it is in your best interest to go ahead and make sure that you have full credit on, on all those homework assignments. If you were struggling with some of them, remember I've uploaded solution manuals for most of them. I'm pretty sure all of them. So you can go back and check the solutions. Um, and make sure that you know how to do all those problems. All right, so you guys uh, took the practice test on Friday. There are still 28% of you guys that have not finished the practice test. So if you were behind on your homework and you haven't taken the practice test, uh, please take that before you watch the rest of this video. Because uh, these are spoilers, I am going to go through the solutions with you. So um, what you should do when you're taking the practice test, you should uh, work through the PDF just like you would on a homework assignment showing all of your work so you can see and go back and see what you did wrong. And then you can watch this video while you're looking at your practice test that you submitted and you can see the answers as we go through and you can figure out what you did wrong. Um, I will be explaining to you what the most common mistake is for every single problem and how you can avoid making that mistake in the future. So this will be really good feedback for you guys. I was planning on making this video, uh, having it come out on Saturday, but then I realized some of you guys were behind on the homework. So I got rid of one of the, one of the assignments that we were going to do on Monday. And instead, all you have to do is this video, uh, and go through your practice test solutions. We'll have a review assignment tomorrow and then that'll be our last assignment for this unit. And then on Wednesday, we're all going to take the test together. Okay. So uh, another thing is with the test, you guys should do better than you did on the practice test. I just kind of threw the practice test at you. There were some problems and they were a little tricky, but after you watch this, you should know how to do them and you should do a lot better on the test itself. Okay. Another thing is make sure you're taking the test uh, by yourself as you're not cheating or anything like that. Uh, member character is doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Another thing is after we've taken our test, we'll probably take three, three tests before we come back after fall break. Um, I'm going to give you guys a midterm over these three tests that we take. Okay. So on that midterm, it will be in class and there'll be multiple versions and all kinds of great stuff like that. Uh, cause it's all on me. And, uh, if you don't score similar on the midterm, as you did on these tests, it's going to show up a giant red flag that you probably weren't being honest when you were taking these tests. Okay. So, uh, you will kind of have to prove that you really do know this stuff. Uh, so do your best. Uh, another thing is there's really no reason that you would need to cheat because I'm giving you all the homework assignments, all the solutions for the homework assignments. And with the practice test and going over the practice test, you should feel confident that you know what you're doing, uh, to, to, to do your best on the test as well. Okay. Also, if you don't do very well on these tests, that midterm grade, that midterm test grade that we take when we come back from fall break can replace uh, these, these scores if you didn't figure it out, but you figured it out later on. Okay. So another positive perk. All right. So without uh, any further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this. So on number one, this is actually the third most missed problem and it should have been fairly simple. It was over our points, lines, and planes. So which of the following points form a unique plane? Well, in order to define a unique plane, you have to have three non-collinear points, meaning three points that are not on the same line. If they are on the same line, like what we see for answer A, then it's going to not define a unique plane because the plane will still be allowed to rotate 360 degrees. So if we have points T, P, and S, T, P, and S, those are all on line M, so they are collinear. The problem with that is it could be this plane R, but it also still allows the plane to rotate 360 degrees. So it's not a well-defined plane. So uh, we cannot use points T, P, and S to define our plane. 
Then we have points. Uh, so by the way, 21% of you guys set, thought that that was the answer. Uh, but the problem is that they have to be non-collinear in order to define it. What about points Q, P, and R? So Q is up here, P is here, and R is here. Uh, but the problem is R is not actually a point because there's no dot or point next to it. So R is actually referring to the plane itself, just like M refers to this line and N refers to this line because there's no points next to them. Okay, So this would be true, Q, P, and R because they're not all in the same line, except R is not a point, it's a plane. So uh, careful on that one, that was another mistake. Then we have the similar thing with points M v and p well point m is not actually a point it's referring to the line because there's no point next to it uh, otherwise uh, m v and p that would define that plane plane r if that was actually a point but it's not so the last one we have is v p and t that has to be it so v p and t yes all three of those are not on the same line and so they will define the plane well so that was that was it 48 percent of you guys got that right 52 percent missed it for some reason uh, really just be careful with collinear points and also this r is not actually a point it's referring to the plane Number two, most of you guys got this right, which is really good. Name a ray that's opposite to PT. PT starts at P and it goes in the direction of T. So it's this ray right here. An opposite ray uh, starts in the same place and goes in the opposite direction and forms a line. So opposite of PT is going to be ray PS. So that would be D down here. So uh, most of you guys got this right, but a few common mistakes. Uh, PT and TP are not opposite rays. They do go in opposite directions. PT goes that way, TP goes the other way, but they don't start in the same point. So be careful with that. Uh, the other uh, mistake, uh, PQ, that one's not going in the opposite direction as PT. They do start in the same place, but they have to go in the opposite direction. And then SP, uh, you have to do PS because SP is going in the same direction as PT. So be careful with that one. Uh, my guess is that some of you guys just w didn't remember what uh, an opposite ray was and you just ended up guessing. So anyway, um, you guys should be able to get that one right now. Uh, almost everyone got this one right, so really simple. Uh, we're talking about complementary and supplementary angles that add up to 90 and 180. Uh, so complementary angles are 90 and then supplementary angles are 180. So that's just re remembering your vocabulary. Um, no big deal. Do you remember what vertical and congruent? So vertical angles are opposite on a on a um, between two lines formed by the same two lines. Opposite uh, angles, they are going to be congruent to each other. Congruent means that they have the same size and the same shape. Uh, so like two angles are both angles, and if they're congruent, means they have the same magnitude or the same size. Adjacent means that they're next to each other. Like rays are adjacent if they have, share a common side, uh, a common ray. Um, those are our vocab words. All right, number four, this is the most missed problem, and it's all based on uh, knowing your, your vocab. So the word here is they say angles one and angles two form a, are a linear pair. So you have to remember what does a linear pair look like? And I did not give you a diagram, so you had to remember. Well, a linear pair are a pair of angles that form a line, which in other words means that they add up to 180 degrees. Uh, so when we have these two expressions, we have angle one, which is 4x minus 28, and then uh, angle two, which is 2x plus 88. We, they're not equal to each other. They actually add up to 180 degrees. So this is how we would set it up. Angle one plus angle two is equal to 180. Then we can combine our like terms that are on the same side of the equal sign. So we have 6x plus 60, and we're doing 88 minus 28, which would give us a 60. Then we would subtract 60 from both sides, leaving with just 6x is equal to 120. We divide both sides by six, which leaves us with x is equal to 20. This is the correct answer. But if you look over here, this says angle one is equal to 20, not x is equal to 20. So to find angle one, we have to plug it in. So 20 times four is going to be 80 minus 28 is actually going to be 52. So the correct answer is going to be A in this case. And to get angle two, you could just subtract that one from 180 or just plug it in here. You get 40 plus 88, which is going to be 128. Now, a uh, common mistake that we saw on this one, unless you were just guessing, would be you set them equal to each other. Now, that's only true is if they were both right angles um, or if they said that this line was perpendicular to the other line or something like that. So we don't know that they're equal to each other. What we know when it's a linear pair is that they add up to 180 degrees. Well, if you set them equal to each other, then you would have got this 58 answer on the bottom. 
which uh, a lot of you guys apparently got. I'm guessing you just didn't know what linear pair was, so you just set them equal to each other, uh, which is not a bad idea to try, but um, in this case, it didn't work, right? Because they're supplementary. Uh, and you would have got 58, and then either the other one would be 58 as well, but it's actually X would be equal to 58, not even the angle. So uh, lots, of, lots of issues there. So make sure you remember linear pair means they're supplementary and adjacent, which means it looks like this, and they add up to 180 degrees. All right, number five, what's the value of X? So these two angles are vertical. They're formed by the same lines and they're opposite with each other. What that means is that they have to add up to 180 degree, or sorry, not that, no, it means that they are going to be congruent to each other. So for instance, if this is 100 uh, degrees here, then that means that this uh, has to be, let me see if I can resize this, it means that the other angle that's gonna be the supplement of 100 has to be 80 degrees, and then the supplement of 80 has to be 100 degrees here, and that's why these two are congruent. So we set them equal to each other, subtract 24 from both sides, leaving 2x is equal to 76, and then we divide both sides by two, which leaves us with x is equal to 38. So our answer would be B, some bravo. Uh, looks like most of you guys got that right, which is wonderful, so good job. Uh, the 2x plus 24 is equal to 100, that is true, but they wanna know what the value of x is, not what the value of the expression. All right, number six, it says, Angle OB, or sorry, ray OB bisects the angle AOC. Now, I don't even think I even mentioned bisecting. Um, so bisect means, it's kind of like the same thing as a midpoint with a segment, but bisect means that it cuts it in half. And you probably could tell by the diagram that it meant that it cut it in half. Um, and also we can show the marks that it cuts in half by putting a single mark here uh, for the angles, just like on a congruency, uh, con for congruency for segments, we can put a single tick mark through both of them. All right, so ray OB bisects angle AOC, means it cuts it in half. If we know that BOC, B, O, C, this one here is 22. Then what does the other one have to be? Well, it's also 22 because O, B cuts it in half. So then what's the measurement of A, O, C? So A, O, C is gonna be the whole thing. So we just add them together, which gives us 44. Uh, most people like miss this one. You probably thought it was A, O, B they were asking for, but they're actually asking for A, O, C, the whole thing. So you did the half instead of the whole thing. So be careful on that. But most of you guys got this one right, which is very good. Number seven, uh, only 1%. So I think only one person missed this one. Uh, so I don't know why I'm even explaining it to you, but EF is 45, FG is 25. We wanna know what EG is. So this is our segment addition postulate. If F is a collinear point strictly in between E and G, then EF plus FG is equal to EG, which is the whole thing. So just add them together, which is simply gonna be equal to 70. So our answer is C. Good job, you guys got that right. It must be too easy of a problem. Maybe I should put expressions in it for next year. All right, number eight, we have EF, which is 2X minus 10. So EF, we can go ahead and put that there. Uh, actually, I'll put it right there. And then we have FG. So FG is this segment right here. And then EG, the whole thing they're saying is 25. So if you wanna draw just a quick little brace across the top or a measurement line, uh, you can label it as 25. So on this one, there were two different ways that, that people set it up. One of them, they said that these two were equal to each other, but that's only true if F is the midpoint. And they didn't say it was a midpoint, but we do know what it adds up to. Those two expressions add up to 25. So this would be the correct way to set it up. Uh, the first expression plus the second expression is equal to 25. We can combine our like terms, which will give us 6x minus 23. Add 23 to both sides. Divide both sides by 6, leaving us with x is equal to 8. Uh, that would give us x is equal to 8. Then when we plug it in, you're actually going to end up with 6 and 19 when you plug it in for both of those. 2x would be 16 minus 10 is 6, right? So EF is 6. So our correct answer is D. Um, the other way that most common mistake is if you said they were equal to each other. Again, that's only true if it's a midpoint, which would either, either be marked by a congruency mark between both of them, or they would tell you that F was a midpoint. Uh, that's where you would get the 1.5. So be careful. Um, make sure you don't set them equal when they actually add up to something, kind of like uh, what we had on this one here. So again, don't, don't set them equal to each other when they add up to 180, or in this case, they told us that they added up to 25 when we're talking about the lengths of the segments. All right, number nine, this time T is the midpoint of SU, meaning it uh, cuts SU into two equal halves. That means that these two sides are going to be equal to each other. Uh, now, there was a common mistake that I'll show you over here. Uh, so just set them equal to each other. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is subtract two X from both sides, it leaves with three X is equal to 21. Then we're gonna divide both sides by three, which leaves with X is equal to seven. Uh, that was our first answer, X is equal to seven. Next one wants to know what ST is, so plug it in. Seven times five is gonna be 35. So our correct answer is C as in Charlie. Ouch, Charlie, that really hurt. 
Okay, so then uh, the other way, you set it up uh, right, but then you combine like terms. You can't add the 2x to the 5x. You have to subtract 2x from both sides, right? So you were combining like terms across the equal sign, and we don't do that. Okay, so if we did that, you would end up with 7x is equal to 21. Then when you divide, you get x is equal to 3. So that was a, another common mistake you got there, unless you guys were just guessing. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, make sure you don't combine like terms across here. We actually have to subtract the 2x from both sides because they're not on the same side of the equal sign. On the previous problem, the reason we were able to add the 2x and 4x is because they were on the same side of the equal sign. So we didn't have to subtract 2x from both sides or anything like that. All right, number 10. Uh, this was kind of a funky problem, uh, but if you label the diagram like I have here, it makes it a whole lot easier. So the first thing they see is AC, the distance between A and C, and B and D are both 16. So AC and BD are 16. They tell us CD is 12. So if this part is 12, what is BC going to be? So the whole thing's 16. This is 12 of it. So it's 16 minus 12. Should give us 4, right? Okay. So BC is going to be 4. That's going to be really important. We can't solve this problem without knowing that BC is equal to 4. Now they want to know what is AD. So AD is going to be linked from A all the way to D. Okay, um, another thing, by the way, is if this 16 and that's 4, that means this other part over here has to be 12 as well, right? So 16 minus 4 is 12. So AD is the distance from A all the way to D. So lots of ways you can do it at this point. You can just add 12 plus 4 plus 12, which will give you 32, or is it 28? It's 28, sorry. Uh, another way you can do it is 16 plus 16, which is the most common mistake, which will give you 32. But when you add 16 and 16, the problem is you count the BC twice. So to fix that, you would have to subtract the 4 in the middle, which will leave you with the 28. Okay, so that's how you do that problem. Uh, number 11, find the distance between the two points. So on this one, you can label the points x1, y1, x2, y2. Then use the distance formula, which will be provided to you on the test, just like it was provided on the practice test. So no big deal. Uh, so x2 minus x1 is going to be 9 minus 4 and then 3 minus 2. 9 minus 4 is going to be 5. 3 minus 2 is going to be 1. So we have 5 squared plus 1 squared. We can go ahead and put that right in the calculator if we want. Um, you can also square them because we know what that is. So 5 squared is 25 plus 1 is going to be 26. Uh, then the square root of 26 is going to give us the 5.1 and that will be our answer. I'm not quite sure how you guys got 6 out of this whole thing. That would, you'd have to have 36 and I don't know where that would come from. If you add those together, it would give you 25 and 5. No, that wouldn't work either. Okay, so I'm not sure how you guys got 6. I'm guessing you just guessed. All right, uh, that was 1. Let's look at number 12. Find the coordinates. Uh, we want to find the midpoint. So if remember for a midpoint formula, it's the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So we add the x's together and divide by 2. So that's 6 and 8 and 11 and 1. Uh, 6 and 8 is going to give us 14, half 14 is 7, and then 11 and 1 is 12, half of 12 is 6. So our answer is going to be 7 and 6 is our midpoint, which should be B as in Bravo. Uh, most common mistake was 7 and 12, so you forgot to divide the, the 12 by, by 2, which would give us 6. So be careful on that one. Uh, most of you guys got it right, though. What's a perimeter and area of the rectangle? So they call it rectangle W, X, Y, Z, no big deal. So difference is the perimeter is going to be the distance, distance all the way around. So you can count. We're going down 4 and over 8. You can also look at the uh, number line. So negative 2 to 6 is going to be a distance of 8. Uh, to find the perimeter, uh, we have to, the perimeter is going to be uh, the distance all the way around. So 4 plus 8 plus 4 plus 8, which is going to give us 24. So our answer is either going to be A or D. So we can already uh, eliminate B and we can eliminate D as well. Okay, I must have said something weird there. Uh, the next thing we want to do is find the area. So that's going to be the base times the height as long as they're perpendicular, and they are. So that's going to leave us with 32. So our answer is going to be C as in Charlie. Let me uh, undo that. Oops. Uh, so C as in Charlie. Uh, most of you guys didn't miss this problem. Uh, some of you might have switched the answer for the perimeter and the area. Just make sure you read it carefully. So 24 and 32, 32 and 24. Uh, that was another common mistake, I guess, but not really because most of you guys got this one right. Number 14, what's the area of the following figure? So we have to break this down by deconstruction. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a straight line going down, and now we have two uh, two rectangles, or this one's actually a square, but uh, I got 
8 times 7 on this side and then 4 times 4 on the other side. So in order to fill in these missing values because they're not found they're not on your diagram, we have to do some subtraction. So if the whole bottom is 12 and this is 8 up here, that means the green part has to be 4. And if the whole thing over here is 7 and this part is 4, that means the missing red part has to be 3. Now that I've broken down to all this possible sides, I want to go ahead and uh, multiply. So 8 times 7 is going to be 56. So that's going to be 56. And then 4 times 4 is going to be 16. And then the only thing we have to do is add those two together, which is going to give us 72. So our answer is D. A uh, common mistake on this one is if you did 12 times 7. Now 12 times 7 would be the entire rectangle, which would be including this part that got cut out. Okay. So we don't just do 12 times 7, which would give you 84. Okay. Be careful. You got to find uh, the part that was cut out. Uh, you can cut it down into two, uh, a square and a rectangle, but you can't just uh, multiply those two. You tried to do a shortcut, but it didn't work. All right, what's the perimeter of the square whose area is 81? I recommend drawing a square on this one just so you can visualize what's going on. So here's my square. I want to know what the side lengths are first. So if it has an area of 81, first of all, how do we find an area of a square? Well, first, we know that if the side length is x, the other side is x as well because the square has all the si same sides. So the area of a square with side length x is going to be x times x, in other words, x squared. Then uh, x, so x squared is equal to 81. The next thing I want to do is get rid of the squared. So I take the square root of both sides, or the half power. So the square root of 81, it's a perfect square, so it's pretty easy. x is equal to 9. So I know that this length over here is 9. Uh, the other length over here also has to be 9. Uh, and so are the other sides as well, because after all, it is a square. That's a really weird 9. I'll try that again. There we go, much better. Okay, so the next question is what's the perimeter? So 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9, or in other words, 9 four times, or 9, 9 times 4, is going to be equal to 36. So our answer is B, um, perimeter is 36. A uh, common mistake here is you give me the length of the side, which was 9, which is true, but that's an intermediate step you have to do and find before you can find the overall perimeter, which is 4 times 9. All right, number 16. This is the second most missed problem. Um, I didn't necessarily show you guys how to do this problem, so the fact that uh, almost half of you guys uh, got it right was actually pretty impressive, unless you were just guessing. So good job. I'm proud of you guys for figuring it out. But the problem you'll see on the test will be very similar to this, so you're going to know how to do it. Uh, you just have to make sure you know how to use the Pythagorean theorem. So we want to find the perimeter. First of all, what is the perimeter? Just like we did in the last problem, perimeter is the distance all the way around. So we have to add all the side lengths. Well, the bottom one, since it's uh, going to be parallel to one of our, our axes on the bottom, it's just we can just add it. Or we can just count it together. So we're going from negative 8 to positive 2, which is going to be a length of 10. But on this side here, uh, because it's not parallel to one of our axes, we can't just count it. So if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's not right. Because each one of those links is actually diagonal, and it's longer than one of these. You can even see it's longer. Uh, so if we were actually doing this right, it would be 6 radical 2. How I know that? Well, it's because it's a special right triangle, which has side links similar to 1, 1, 1, and radical 2, which comes from the Pythagorean theorem. But you don't know all that stuff yet, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I know, magic. It is so cool. So what we're going to do to actually solve for the length of this is use the Pythagorean theorem. So break this down. We have a length of 6 for the height of the triangle and a length of 6 for the other leg as well. So um, just drop a perpendicular from the top here. It's also called the altitude. So we have 6 squared plus 6 squared. That's going to be the Pythagorean theorem here. I'm going to call this blue length here just y. Um, just one of just a variable. It doesn't matter what variable you call it. And on the other side, to find this length here, we're going to do 4 and 6. So 6 squared plus 4 squared. Uh, then just do your Pythagorean theorem. Square both of the both of the terms, the legs, add them together. And the last step we're going to do is take the square root of both sides, which is going to give you two decimals. So we have 7.21 for this length over here, and we have 8.48 for this length over here. Now that we have those and we've done our Pythagorean theorem, which is yeah, quite a bit of work, but just do the calculator, you'll get it. As now we want to add them all together to find our total perimeter. So 7.21 plus 8.48 plus 10 is going to give us 25.7. So just add them all together and you're good to go. And that'll be your answer of D. Now the most common mistake here with this 22 is if you just added these together, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then you went down here, I guess 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I don't know. So 6 and 6 and 10 would give you 22. But again, that's not how we do it. We have to use a Pythagorean theorem to find out what those exact links are. And if you notice, they're not they're, they're, uh, decimals. 
or approximate approximated by decimals or uh, so anyway you have to use the pythagorean theorem so that's it those are all 16 problems you can go back and rewatch whatever problems you missed hopefully you were going through on the pdf to see what you missed and if it was one of the common mistakes that a lot of other people made you know what you did wrong uh, so make sure you study it make sure you know how to do it tomorrow we're going to do a review assignment it's got more problems like this one on it and some of the other most missed problems from the practice test so that you guys will be ready to take that test on wednesday and also keep in mind if you haven't finished all of your assignments or turned them in or if you didn't get full credit for them you have until wednesday to turn them all in and i'll regrade them and give you full credit also after we take the test on wednesday i am going to put all of the grades into power school um, and then those grades are going to be uh, the homework grades i'm not going to take any more and the test grade will not be replaced until we take the midterm um, which will uh, which will replace these test scores if it um, if you did better on the midterm when we come back okay uh, that's it so i hope you guys have a good day bye bye